That is the town of Divine, Texas, about 20 miles southwest of San Antonio. And once again, thanks to Greg for that great footage. We'll show more of that at the end of the video. This afternoon, things have quieted down across the U.S. quite a bit. We have a surface cyclone at around Medicine Lodge, Kansas. That's part of a frontal system going from Arkansas up to Colorado. And then we have a larger wave across Utah with some cold air spreading into Northern California and Nevada. Also, the reappearance of the dry line that runs from about Enid down to Abilene and Del Rio. Ahead of it, a lot of tropical air flowing north, getting some advection fog across parts of Interstate 10 in Texas, dew points uh, very sultry 71 degrees, contrasting with very dry air, downslope and warm conditions, seven degree dew point at Amarillo. Up to the north, digging out from a snowstorm that's on its way out across Ontario and Quebec. There's what the snow depth readings look like. Looking at about a foot of snow across North Dakota, Winnipeg, they got 11 inches, mostly back on Wednesday, and a pretty vast snow track from Idaho, Montana, across Ontario. Minneapolis did not really get much of that, same in South Dakota. So we are starting to change seasons. And as we go through the map, you're going to see a little bit more rain than snow up in some of the typical northern latitudes. There's the Pacific, little system off the coast of California, not doing much at this time, could be intensifying. And up in Alaska, an occlusion. And there it is, some of that rain all the way up to Nome, over to McGrath and down towards Kodiak. And over the past couple months, that's all been snow for the most part. So we are starting to warm up the column quite a bit, but still a lot of cold air across the Arctic ice pack down into the Northwest Territories, sub-zero conditions from Barrow all the way down towards Fort Good Hope. The Canadian high Arctic looking quite cold this afternoon, northerly flow and lots of sub-zero temperatures. So that's where some of the wintry weather is starting to reappear. The zero line running about like this, all the way down towards the southern part of Baffin Island and back up towards Thule. And the minus 10 line, yeah, you can put that in there too. And about the coldest that I'm seeing, looks like about minus 18 at Resolute. Further out to the east, there's some more of that rain. Remember the southeast coast of Greenland, bombarded by a lot of snow over the winter, but now we're starting to see rain making an appearance. And that will start melting some of that snow cover. Rain all the way down the frontal system, and then we've got some cold air advecting off of Labrador into the North Atlantic. And circling around back to the eastern U.S., outgoing frontal system, not really all that strong south of Nova Scotia, some of that rain spreading up into Quebec, and then going back down into the U.S. Lots of thunderstorm activity there in Florida with a stagnant frontal boundary, and that returns us to the flow of tropical air into Texas. Let's take a closer look at that. There's the SPC experimental product for Theta E, and I have noticed that when we use these thumbnails on our videos, they don't really get as many clicks, so I'm not too sure how much interest there is in these panels, but I'll just show you a couple of them. There's the Theta E coming up into Oklahoma. That's going to be associated with that low-level jet transporting the moisture northward, and that represents some of the most favorable areas for thunderstorms, assuming that the atmosphere cools as you go north, because you get less of that capping effect and more instability due to the temperature differential between the surface and upper levels. So that's kind of a baseline rule of thumb. And of course, you can get stuff further to the south if things are more favorable. And the actual axis of moisture, that's going to be this right here. You can see that's the center of that 
ridge of moisture. And that's where the skew T parcels are going to look much more enhanced and filled with low level moisture. So that goes from the Texas Hill Country up to about Stephenville and looks like Paul's Valley and Tulsa. And then we'll just give you the boundaries very quickly. Velocity, tensor, magnitude kind of bears that out. And all we see here is the cold front that's racing south. Not much convergence further south along the dry line and trough. So that's going to be detrimental for any storms developing. You know, that could pull together later on. But right now, not all that favorable. Most of the convergence right in here. Let me show that to you a little bit better. There it is, the convergence and a little bit more around Snyder and Abilene. So with that kind of information, you can really hit the ground running when you look at the satellite. And what we see here is that the deeper moisture indicated by the stratocumulus does not really coincide with the moisture axis itself. Remember that was uh, yeah, actually about right here, Paul's Valley up to Tulsa. So what's happening, it looks like there's a lot of erosion of the western edge of that moisture. And indeed, you see around Interstate 35 right there, looks like the cumulus kind of disappears. So maybe the atmosphere not all that favorable, not enough low-level moisture, probably some very strong heating helping to disperse some of the moisture. We can take a look at the soundings and solve that. So you see what we're doing is we're visualizing the processes that are occurring in this moisture field. If we go to the high resolution rapid refresh, looks like 18Z is the latest one we have. And we'll drop a sounding in the middle of that moisture that's going to be, let's see, Paul's Valley, Stephenville, kind of in this area here. And we'll pull up a sounding. And that'll characterize the moisture return. And there we see it is capped cap right there around 750 800 millibars the moisture not too bad starts out at 61 decreases into the 50s so yeah that's going to be kind of a negative factor we want to see that moisture to be kind of continuous all the way up through the moisture return and the flow a little bit veered there that's not helping either southwesterly from the surface on up into the mid-levels where it becomes strongly westerly. So part of what's happening is we're replacing the upper parts of that moisture layer with drier air from the west. So it's kind of like the dry line replacing some of the air up around 2,500 to 5,000 and making it more and more shallow with time east of that dry line. And of course that results in eastward progression of that dry line but without that good convergence, that's going to be a problem. And let's see if that convergence comes together later during the day. Not very much. That's the dry line right there. Look at that wind. Southwesterly, southwesterly. That's zero convergence for the most part. So the dry line will move to the I-35 corridor, Paul's Valley to about Mineral Wells and San Angelo a bit. Just not much going on with that, but some very vigorous advection to the west during the evening. Probably some acceleration of that low-level jet. Let's take a look at that sounding around Fort Worth later tonight. And yeah, look at that. That's quite a change. It becomes more strongly south, maybe a south southeasterly component. Still capped. So it looks like it's trying. That could sometimes result in nocturnal thunderstorms. And you can see that triple point right there. This is about 10 o'clock tonight around Duncan, maybe Lawton, Oklahoma. The cold air spreading south. And you can see how that cold air is slightly more humid. So it appears kind of whitish up there compared to the very dry continental air behind the dry line. And, of course, this is the tropical air. So some very interesting characteristics here. And then going into the overnight hours, the triple point recedes westward as the moisture builds back in. And then by tomorrow morning, triple point around Midland and the cold air oozing south into northwest Texas and a little low pressure area around Wichita Falls. So some very neat small scale structure going on. 
and looks like a little bit of occlusion there around Greenville. Cold air stagnates across, I don't know, I lost track of the time, but let's check out the precipitation being forecast by the high resolution rapid refresh. Not much this afternoon, very, pretty much nothing at all. Some elevated stuff in northeastern Oklahoma around daybreak, but that's about it. And that does get an MCS going in Arkansas. Little northwest flow storms there around Little Rock down to Mississippi. But it remains dry around Texas and Oklahoma. So hopefully those are some things that you can look for when you do an analysis in your area. And you know, I was poking around with the scooties just a little bit. Later this evening, this is around dark, you can see the supercell composite increases quite a bit northwest of Fort Worth and south of Oklahoma City. And that moisture return pushing that dry line back into Wichita Falls, and then there's the triple point. And I was thinking that, you know, even though we don't have much convergence and a strong dry line, I think we have to kind of be careful and check the visible satellite imagery because the cap it's there but it's not that strong in certain areas along that dry line so given the right amount of cap weakness and convergence there is that potential for an isolated storm somewhere north or northwest of fort worth so we're talking about late this evening we shall see, so I would keep checking those visible satellite images and be on guard for enhanced cumulus development along the dry line. Of course, most likely nothing's going to happen, but it is April. You never can tell. Surprise thunderstorms are not unknown, so that's something you can look for. Anyway, let's check out weather around the rest of the country. Temperature records, that's a good place to start. This afternoon, 92 at Roswell, tying the record for today. For tomorrow, quite an amazing contrast on the Great Plains. 102 at Del Rio, contrasting with 15 at Rapid City. And these temperatures up here in North Dakota and Montana, those are breaking the record for the date. Lots of single digits and teens. More of the same for Sunday, hundreds around San Antonio, and teens and 20s up in the Great Lakes. And Burns, Oregon, tying the record at 16 degrees. For Monday, the cold weather continuing to hang on across the Dakotas and Montana. Then for Tuesday, temperatures near 80 degrees starting to show up in Colorado. Well, I was hoping to show a bit of Big Rig Steve today. Looks like he made it to Ohio, probably on break. So we'll have to go it alone looking at weather around the country. There's that little frontal system off the coast of California. It's got a very classic appearance. There's that Bear Clinic cloud shield right there associated with the warm air advection, and then the cold air advection zone back in here. So placing the fronts, it's going to be about like that occlusion going back to the northwest and one of the low pressure areas at least right there and that will definitely have an effect on the weather in california this weekend there's saturday morning heavy rains coming into sacramento stockton san francisco and more snows for the sierra nevadas snow all the way up to oregon and idaho and that moves into the great basin area dries out a little bit but I can just about make out that system somewhere in here, bringing heavy snow to parts of Idaho later on Saturday and then crossing into Wyoming for early Sunday. There it is re-emerging in the Dakotas for Sunday during the day itself. The fronts are looking about like that, and there's the occlusion going up north to the original low pressure area. So that'll definitely be a northern plains event. But it does look like down to the south, some precip gets going, MCSs around Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana 
for Sunday evening. And maybe some thunderstorm activity there around South Texas as well. The remainder of next week, well, a lot of weather there in Georgia and the Carolinas, more snow for the Great Lakes, but another big old high driving out the moisture once again. So it looks like more cool, dry weather to start out next week. Then the return flow sets up in Texas. You can see it going all the way up to the Dakotas. And then another powerful weather system coming in from the Pacific, more snows in the Great basin area the northwest and that moves once again into the dakotas and not a whole lot down in texas and arkansas and oklahoma so that moves out of the picture another snowstorm for ontario more cold air and you can kind of make out a sort of weak front right there for the end of the week another west coast system and that low is even deeper 985 millibars in colorado and the Pacific Front's going to be back in here. That's probably how things are aligned. And then we probably got the dry line further out to the west. And that could be a pretty dynamic day. We're talking about Friday next week, seven days from now. That could be a big chase day for some people. And that moves out into the Dakotas over the weekend, but it looks warmer just more thunderstorms and rain showers, and only snow back in the deformation zone to Rapid City and Bismarck. And that gets carried up. Once again, another snowstorm for Winnipeg late next weekend. I did want to show you how things are warming up. Starting to see 50s in Iceland. And then down in England, well, right now it's the middle of the night, but let me run that back to earlier. That's going to be about 14Z, middle of the afternoon, lots of 60s across England, almost 70 at Birmingham. And then going down into Europe, 70s in France, near 70 in Germany, and of course checking on Ukraine. They've warmed up quite a bit. Of course, we're still missing METAR data, but down to the south, 70s, 60s, and upper 50s up north. So almost certainly we're looking at 60s and 70s for afternoon temperatures in Ukraine. And that's a major change from three weeks ago when things were just frozen up. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Our mailbag a little bit empty. Our last two supporters, Chris Kegley and Shara Kay, on March 26th and 30th and no new supporters during the month of April. I would think if this program is valuable to you, you would help support it. This program does take quite a few hours to produce, so please consider that. Our Patreon links are coming up here shortly. Hope you all have a great evening, a great weekend, and we will see you Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.